All right, thank you both so much for being with me here today. Um, but I sort of feel like this is a somewhat unusual pairing. We have on one side quite a large company uh, representation here, and on the other, a uh, significantly smaller company. Yeah. Uh, could you give me just a little bit of an overview of how this partnership came up? Yeah, and Siemens is uh, active in the field of maritime application. I'm representing the Siemens Marine Department, which is located in Hamburg. And uh, we provide uh, power distribution uh, concepts for ships. And uh, later, uh, we will discuss how we can introduce into this power distribution concept uh, fuel cells. In the last years, uh, maybe you have recognized it, uh, Siemens was active in uh, providing all-electric ferries, where we uh, also uh, manufacture batteries uh, for these applications. In uh, Trondheim, there's a, a huge uh, Siemens uh, unit producing batteries together with the uh, power uh, propulsion, uh, uh, with the propulsion system from Siemens and the power distribution. Uh, we combined it and uh, offered something like an all-electric uh, ship. And the next step will be the integration uh, of the fuel cell to this. Which is exactly where, where you come in, I assume. Yes, so we are a company producing fuel cell stacks and fuel cell system and have been around since uh, 10 years. And before that, we started development within the Volvo Group. We spent up in 2008. So I have been in contact with Siemens regarding fuel cells for about 20 years. And um, we started to develop a fuel cells and we do have systems for transport applications, Dutch application, and then we recognize that maritime is a very interesting application of fuel cell for different, many different uh, aspects due to you can increase the efficiency and make it cleaner and get rid of CO2. So we s decided to go into the marine uh, application. We started a company called Hyon, which is a joint venture together with Nell and um, Hexagon in Norway. So we have a company for marine application in Norway there. And uh, so we can, with that company, supply a um, uh, fuel cell system, uh, electrolyzer from Nell, hydrogen storage system from Hexagon. And then we saw that for us, that we were very interesting to team up with a company who have what we, we don't have, this electrical part of that, the energy management part. And we recognized that Siemens would be an ideal partner for us in this aspect, since we um, we are a small company, a guild company, innovative company, but we don't have this uh, global reach which Siemens have, which has the global uh, network for uh, sales, supply, off the market and service. So I think that's a very good fit, both technology and also very complementary. Right, so it sounds like you both bring something unique to this partnership mm -hmm. from the technology and as well from the electrical expertise and the, the international um, I don't know, being on the international stage, I guess, with Siemens. Uh, so I just wanted to go back. You mentioned that fuel cells for a maritime application is actually quite interesting. So, of course, uh, we all love fuel cells because they're a green hydro or they're a green energy type thing. But outside of that, that's true for all types. What makes them especially useful or interesting uh, with respect to maritime or marine use? Globally. The emission of greenhouse gases needs to be reduced, and one of the major contributions comes from the maritime application, from larger ships. If you see in harbors uh, a large cruise ship putting on the brakes, the large, uh, the uh, quite huge uh, black cloud coming out of this uh, furnace of these uh, ships, we need to avoid this. And this is uh, something uh, we invest into that uh, we reduce the uh, emissions significantly. One part is to get uh, everything on an all-electric platform which Siemens is providing, and the other thing is uh, to integrate uh, suitable uh, storage systems and uh, fuel cell uh, systems. Right, so uh, we have that sort of aspect. Is there anything else that the fuel cell um, type thing or the electric boat in general is particularly good at? I know you'd mentioned a little bit some like vibration type yeah, things. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it's uh, for, for reduction of emission and C, C, so to reach the zero target, you, we need to go over to zero emissions. But we have also the comfort aspects that with the fuel cells, you will not have the vibration, you will not have the noise, you will not have the uh, emission there. So 
Powercell, for instance, is involved in a maritime project already, where we, the European funded project, where we develop about 200 kilowatt system, which will be put onto a Finnish research vessel, which will go into doing re research and making measurement on the ocean. And then uh, the fuel cell system will not have the power to uh, propulse the, the, the ship, but during measurement, then they can have the to stabilize this ship, they can also uh, uh, have the power for supply for all equipment around, so they can do measurements without emission, without vibration, without noise, which are very sensitive measurements for this momentum measurement. So this is also a big advantage for fuel cells compared with conventional technologies. Yeah, that's so interesting that now for like research vessels, you can actually be collecting accurate data points that are potentially like the underwater wildlife or whatever is not disturbed by the vibrations. And as well, if you're doing water purity, uh, you're no longer contaminating your own samples, which seems like a big problem within the research sector. So that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, so uh, you were also mentioning when the boats would come into harbors or whatever, and they have this big rolling coal type look. Yeah. Um, but some of the ports around the area, particularly like Amsterdam and some places in Norway, have started trying to encourage a zero emissions initiative uh, for the port. And how is this going to impact commercial transport? Yeah, we observe it uh, that several cities will are requesting uh, green technologies for their river ships already. They have to face the same limitation for emissions like the cars on land. So uh, the similar uh, limiting values shall be valid for ships as well, for river ships. And uh, going from rivers to the ocean in the coastal area, uh, you may know that uh, Norway is uh, the first land who will uh, uh, reduce the emissions because uh, they are not allowing uh, from uh, 2025, I believe, 26, um, greenhouse emissions along their coastline. They have to reduce it significantly. So this is a big step forward, and other cities uh, may follow here. Okay, so although, of course, uh, they're not requiring that people are using hydrogen technology, they're simply requiring a reduction uh, in emissions in order to use those ports and to be in, um, in those sensitive areas. Um, in your opinion, it's, of course, uh, battery technology is still more prevalent in most of these areas, um, but there are some drawbacks to using batteries, in particular within the maritime stuff, with uh, in comparison to the hydrogen. Can you give a little bit of reasoning on why there might be advantages to using hydrogen technology here? Yes, I mean, in a maritime application, there you have a very high power need. You're talking many megawatts, and you will go in for long, long distances over a long time, so it will be not possible to have that much energy on board if you store it as in batteries. So you need to have a much higher energy dense storage, like in uh, hydrogen, to be able to, to have it for short ferry is a short distance where you can frequently recharge it, you can use battery, but for longer distance and bigger ships, it's not more practical to, to, to use uh, batteries. Yeah, we see uh, some uh, requirements to be solved in the future. One is the uh, requirement uh, of fuel storage. If you consider large megawatt uh, units, uh, if you want to operate them with compressed hydrogen, there's no way to do it. So we have to f improve uh, storage technologies uh, uh, going into the uh, liquid, liquefaction of uh, hydrogen and other uh, carbon-free uh, technologies like the LOHC storage. Mm. Uh, this will help uh, to reduce the emissions significantly and to uh, reduce the required volume for the storage as well. Okay, so although the hydrogen is good for uh, a longer trip and less enormous batteries because the maritime stuff has such a high power requirement, uh, of course there are still challenges, like you yeah. mentioned, Dr. Hoffman, that we just can't carry that sort of hydrogen at the moment. Uh, is there any other challenges that you think of that are sort of unique to this sort of area um, that you guys have come across recently? I think that the hydrogen storage, as already mentioned, is one of the big, biggest problems because you, you need a very large amount of energy. I mean, of course, you still have to get all this certified and classified in the maritime environment. It will, will take some time because the rules are not in place yet, so that is something we really need to start work, working with now. And will, will those uh, guidelines and stuff uh, be brought in from land-based transportation, or do you expect that they'll be quite different? Is there unique requirements there? 
it's quite different for this uh, classification uh, process. Normally, you have uh, some some uh, uh, approvals which are required for this uh, for integrating uh, a fuel cell on a ship, and these approvals depend on two. Uh, decisions. One is a decision on the classification and the other is a decision of the national maritime organizations. Mm -hmm. So if I want to uh, take a boat to a different country where it's not approved, it gets difficult. So we have a worldwide approval that's required for that. So and uh, just to mention that this is a process we need to take place, but PowerCell, together with our joint venture company, Hyon, has already developed the safety concept for how to install the our fuel cell system on board, which will get the approval in principle from the DNV, so we are already on, on the way. Okay, great. So you're, you're already, already making moves. Yep. Um, so with that typo forward thinking, what sort of projects do you guys have on the horizon? What's, what's the next steps for you? Yeah, we are fighting for pilots. We are looking for pilot projects. So uh, we have several contacts here in Germany which are interested in this technology. We have several techniques and Scandi uh, contacts in uh, Scandinavia uh, which are interested in this technology. And please contact us if you have further interest yeah. in applying this uh, technology. Yes, I think that is what we, what we need to know. We need to get this out in real application and demonstrate the technology is working because the technology we have already developed, but now we need to implement it in an application and prove it in a real application. Right, so the technology is sound. You just now need the, uh, need the proof of concept more so. Yeah. All right, yeah. fantastic. Um, we do have time for a couple of questions from the audience. If anyone has any uh, curiosities with respect to maritime applications, uh, now would be a great time to ask the experts. Um, yeah. So Patrick Hoffman from Proton Motor Fuel Cells. Um, so if you expect storage as one of the biggest challenges uh, for fuel cells in maritime, um, where do you see the advantages of PEM fuel cells towards maybe methanol fuel cells? Uh, methanol fuel cell. We have to distinguish uh, two types of methanol fuel cell. One which has been in test phase uh, at the Meyerwerf, for example, that's a high temperature fuel uh, PEM fuel cell. Um, I'm not sure uh, what uh, is the advantage of this uh, high temperature PEM here in this field. And on the other hand, you have to consider the direct methanol uh, fuel cell. I'm not sure which uh, fuel cell you're reflecting to. Yeah, maybe. Uh, direct methanol. Direct no. methanol. Uh, if you want to consider a, a green emission-free uh, operation, you, at least uh, this uh, fuel cell will uh, release carbon dioxide. In case you capture, collect uh, green carbon dioxide, recycle it, it's possible to do. But uh, the direct methanol also suffers, from my perspective, maybe somebody else can confirm it, with a lower efficiency, which means we have larger units on board, installation on board. Okay, thanks. All right, do we have any other questions at the moment? Okay, last one. Warner Priest from Siemens, uh, Australia. Um, as I understand it, Siemens have been doing uh, fuel cell applications in the marine area for a couple of decades already on submarines. How, how, what learnings can we take from that uh, and to bring into these marine applications as far as safety standards? Um, yeah, if you can answer something on that. Yeah, um, actually my main business is a submarine business, it's a fuel cell for submarine applications, and I support my colleagues in the surface uh, business for uh, installing suitable fuel cells. The difference between the submarine fuel cell and the surface fuel cell is the submarine fuel cells are operated with pure oxygen and the surface uh, fuel cells are operated with uh, air. So there is some difference in material, but from the safety perspective, you're right. That's the reason I'm helping these uh, guys. <laughs> All 
right, so unfortunately we are, we're out of time for more questions, but if you would like to continue the discussion, uh, you can find uh, Dr. Rechtunge at C48. Yes. Um, so then you can continue to that chat, and uh, Dr. Rahim Hoffman is here just for today, is that right? I will stay here for the next half an hour. If somebody is interested, please contact me. All right, so take the opportunity and chat with him then. So thank you both so much for your time, um, and I hope you guys continue to have a good, good time at the fair. Okay. Thank you. Yeah.